What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm gonna teach you how to play Yu-Gi-Oh in 2020. So you wanna start playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, when you first sit down with your opponent, both you and your opponent start the game with 8,000 life points. And the objective of the game is to get your opponent's life points down to zero. We achieve this through three main card types, monsters, spells, and traps. But before we get to the card types, I wanna describe the anatomy of the field itself before we go any further. The first zone I wanna highlight is the deck zone. This is where you're gonna place your 40 to 60 card constructed deck that you've brought with you to play. The next zone is the extra deck zone. This is a zone for anywhere between zero and 15 cards comprised primarily of fusion monsters, synchro monsters, exceeds monsters, or link monsters. The next area I wanna cover is the main monster zone. Now there's five main monster zones, which means you can only have five monsters in this zone at max, and you can play pretty Pretty much every type of monster in one of these zones except for link monsters but we'll go ahead and get into that a little bit later on we also have an extra monster zone which you can play monsters from your extra deck so anything that is in the extra deck can be played in an extra monster zone and that does also include link monsters when it comes to the extra monster zone each player is only allowed to occupy one extra monster zone under certain circumstances are players allowed to occupy both extra monsters zones but for the purposes of this video each player is only allowed to occupy one at most the spell and trap zone area is up next just like the main monster zone you can only have a maximum of five cards in this area at any given moment and this is where you're going to activate your spells and trap cards notice on the far left and far right sides of the spell and trap zones there are red and blue areas overlaying those respective zones and those are pendulum zones these are specifically used for pendulum cards which we will cover a little bit later on. Next up is your field spell zone. This zone is specifically allocated for field spells and is where they are placed. And lastly, we have the graveyard. This is where your cards go once they've been used or have been destroyed by your opponent. Another zone that's not necessarily highlighted is the banished zone. This is an area that's kind of like a graveyard where specific cards go from certain card effects. And that is just an area anywhere outside of the main game, but it is also a very important zone zone nonetheless. Keep in mind that if you are a returning player, zones are now more integral to the game now more than ever, and placing cards in specific zones is very impactful on any game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now let's get into the card types, starting off with monsters. These are your bread and butter, and this is essentially how you are going to win most, if not all, of your games. Each turn you are allowed to either normal summon one monster from your hand in face up attack position, or set a monster in face down defense position. Now there's a requirement for being able to normal summon one of those monsters or set one of those monsters and that is demarked by a monster's level. A monster's level must be level 4 or lower in order for it to be normal summoned or normal set. If you have a monster that's level 5 or 6, it requires you to tribute another monster you already have on the field to be able to summon that monster to the field. If it's level 7 or higher, it requires two monsters to be tributed instead of one unless otherwise stated. Keep in mind that tributing counts as your normal summon. Now a lot of monsters can also be special summoned which can be performed in addition to your normal summon. Now special summoning doesn't have any restrictions on how many times it can be performed unless a card says otherwise so feel free to go crazy. Now each monster has an attack value and a defense value. Let's say two of our monsters battle. I attack a monster with my monster that has a higher attack. That means the opposing monster will be destroyed and the difference between the two monsters attack values will be taken out of my opponent's life points. Now let's say I attack into my opponent's monster and my attack power is lower than my opponent's. Well, my monster will be destroyed and I will take the damage between the difference of our two attack values. Now what if both attack values are the same? Well, if one of those monsters attacks another, then both monsters are destroyed, but neither player takes any damage. But let's take another example. Let's say my attack position monster attacks my opponent's face down defense position monster. Well, since that monster is in defense mode, the monster's defensive value will be being applied instead of their attack value. So if I attack that defense position monster, it will be flipped face up and then we see how the damage is calculated. So for instance, if my monster has a higher attack than my opponent's monster's defense, their monster is destroyed, 
but they don't take any damage because the monster was in defense position. But let's take another example. Let's say my attack position monster attacks my opponent's defense position monster, but their monster's defense is higher than my monster's attack. I'm gonna take the damage of the difference. However, my monster will not be destroyed since their monster was in defense position. Now you might be wondering why that monster was set in face down defense position. Well, some monsters have special abilities that trigger when they are flipped face up. So setting them is usually a very strong move. Now you are allowed to change the battle position of your monster from attack to defense or defense to attack depending on the circumstances, but you cannot do it the same turn you summoned that monster. But let's say your monster survived a turn and a new turn has started, you then would be allowed to change that monster from attack to defense or defense to attack. There are a plethora of different types of monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Normal monsters are defined by their tan colored card border and don't really do a whole lot other than that they're monsters that you can use to attack your opponent or defend yourself from your opponent's attacks. Effect monsters are what a majority of people use because these monsters are just normal monsters that actually have a special ability, whether it's to destroy some of your opponent's monsters, allowing you to draw cards, and so on. Fusion monsters are defined by their purple colored card border and are summoned from the extra deck using monsters that are listed in their card text. You most likely need a polymerization spell card or a fusion spell card to summon these fusion monsters from your extra deck and they can be summoned to either a main monster zone or a extra monster zone. Now in addition to needing that polymerization card you also need to have the listed fusion materials either in your hand or on your field whether face up or face down. Ritual monsters are defined by their light blue colored card border and are played in your main deck. These monsters are summoned using ritual spell cards which are Require you to tribute monsters from either your hand or field to be able to summon those monsters from your hand. Synchro monsters are defined by their white colored card border and are special summoned from the extra deck by sending the correct materials to the graveyard from your field. In the card text, you will see the materials required to synchro summon that monster, very similarly to a fusion summon, except you do not need a polymerization or fusion spell card. Synchro monsters usually require a tuner monster, which is a subtype listed on on most monsters card types if they are a tuner and they typically need a non-tuner monster in addition to that. So if you have your tuner monster and your non-tuner monster, you can send both to the graveyard to synchro summon the monster from the extra deck. This monster can be played in either the main monster zone or the extra monster zone. Xyz monsters are defined by their black colored card border and are summoned from the extra deck by taking two or more monsters of the same level and placing them on top of one another, then overlaying the Xyz monster on top of those two or more cards. You can see the cards required to summon Xyz monsters in the card text, and you're able to summon Xyz monsters to either the main monster zone or the extra monster zone. Pendulum monsters are defined by their half orange, half green colored card border. Pendulum monsters are unique as they can be classified as both a monster card as well as a spell card. You can either play pendulum monsters in your main monster zone where their main effects will apply, or if you place them in either the pendulum zones on the far left or far right of the spell and trap zone, they will be considered as a spell card and their pendulum effect will apply. You may notice that pendulum monsters have red and blue colored diamonds that correspond with the pendulum zones in the far left and far right spell and trap zone. Well, when a pendulum monster is in the pendulum zone, that pendulum scale is now active. When you have two monsters in your pendulum zones, let's say you have one that is a pendulum scale of one and another that is a pendulum scale of eight, you are then allowed to conduct what is called a pendulum summon. This can be performed in addition to your normal summon as well as any of your special summons for the turn. Pendulum summoning allows you to special summon any number of monsters with levels in between the two numbers of the pendulum scale. So for instance, if you have a scale one and a scale eight, you are allowed to special summon as many monsters as you want from your hand that are levels two through seven to your main monster zone, or if you have pendulum monsters in your extra deck, you can special summon them to the extra monster zone. For more information on pendulum monsters, I would highly recommend checking out my tutorial on pendulum monsters. And finally, link monsters are defined by their dark blue color 
colored card border. Link monsters can be special summoned from the extra deck by sending the correct materials listed on the card to the graveyard. Link monsters have to be special summoned to the extra monster zone unless there is a link marker from another link monster pointing to an open available zone for you to summon a link monster to that. That means that if you have a link monster already on the field, you are allowed to special summon another link monster from your extra deck to a zone that that monster points to. That also works if your opponent's link monster is pointing to one of your zones, you are also allowed to use that zone that your opponent is providing you. If you are playing pendulum monsters, if a link monster is pointing to open zones with its link arrows, you can pendulum summon those monsters from your extra deck to those zones that those link monsters are pointing to. For more information about link monsters, I would highly suggest checking out my other video specifically covering link monsters. Now let's move on to spell cards. Spell cards are defined by their green colored card border and are primarily used to help you win the game. Most spell cards are played during your turn and you can use as many spells as you wish permitting any conditions on the card text. There are six types of spell cards. Normal spell cards, continuous spell cards, equip spell cards, quick play spell cards, field spell cards, and ritual spell cards. Normal spell cards are activated in the spell and trap zone and once their effect has resolved they are then sent to the graveyard. Continuous spell cards denoted by the infinity symbol stay face up in your spell and trap zone until either the card says to send it to the graveyard or is destroyed by either you or your opponent. Equip spell cards denoted by the cross shape symbol are equipped to either a monster you control or a monster your opponent controls. The equip spell card will stay face up in the spell and trap zone until either the monster it is equipped to leaves the field in which it will be sent to the graveyard or the equip spell card itself is destroyed by either you or your opponent. Quick play spell cards denoted by the lightning bolt symbol are unique because they can be activated both during your turn as well as your opponent's turn. If you want to use a quick play spell during your opponent's turn, you must set the card face down for a turn before flipping it face up. Once the card has been set for a turn, at any point after that, you will then be able to flip the card up to be able to use the card's effect. Field spells denoted by the compass shape symbol are played in the field spell zone and not the spell and trap zone. Similar to continuous spells, field spells will remain face up on the field until either you or your opponent destroys them or if you have another field spell in your hand, you can send the current active field spell to the graveyard to place a new field spell in its place. Ritual spell cards require you to tribute monsters from either your hand or field to ritual summon the specific ritual monster listed on the card, after which the ritual spell is then sent to the graveyard. And now for the third and final card type, trap cards. Trap cards are defined by their purple colored card border. While spell cards are primarily used to help you win the game, trap cards are primarily use to stop your opponent from winning the game. One big difference with trap cards is that they must be placed face down for one turn before being activated, but the upside is that these cards can be used during your opponent's turn. Once a trap card has been face down for a turn, you can use as many of those cards as you wish, permitting any conditions on the card text. There are three types of trap cards, normal trap cards, continuous trap cards, and counter trap cards. Normal trap cards must be set face down for a turn. Then when the opportunity strikes, you may flip the trap card face up, resolve the effect, then send that trap card to the graveyard. Continuous trap cards must also be set face down for a turn, but once they are flipped, they remain face up in the spell and trap zone until either the effect has finished resolving and the card says to send it to the graveyard, or if it gets destroyed by either you or your opponent. While pretty much all trap cards are used in response to an action an opponent takes, counter trap cards are unique because your opponent is only able to respond to to a counter trap card with a counter trap card of their own. Spell speeds are the speed at which you can perform certain actions. Spell speed one effects cannot be used in response to anything. So for instance, spell speed one would include effects such as normal summoning a monster, activating a spell card, or placing a card face down. Spell speed two effects can be used in response to a spell speed one effect, or can be used in response to another spell speed two effect. Spell speed two 
cards are cards that are typically able to be used during either player's turn. So for instance, quick play spell cards are spell speed two, trap cards are spell speed two, and monster effects that say they can be used during either player's turn or are quick effects are also spell speed two. Then we have counter traps at spell speed three. Spell speed three effects can be used in response to a spell speed one effect, spell speed two effect, or a spell speed three effect. Now that you understand all the different types of cards, let's talk about starting a game. When you and your opponent sit down, you want to shuffle your deck and place your extra deck in the extra deck zone. After you finish shuffling, present your deck to your opponent so that they may cut your deck if they so wish. Once you receive your deck back, you're going to place your deck in your deck zone. You then want to determine who goes first through some sort of randomized method such as rolling dice. Whoever wins that die roll then gets to choose whether they want to go first or second. In most instances, going first is the better move. However, there are definitely arguments to go second in certain instances. Both players then draw five cards, but the player going first doesn't draw during their first turn. And with that, you're ready to play some Yu-Gi-Oh! Now let's talk about the phases of play. There's the draw phase, standby phase, main phase one, battle phase, main phase two, and end phase. You're gonna start each turn with the draw phase. This is where you draw one card from the top of your deck. Remember, if you're going first, you do not draw during that first turn. The standby phase is next. This is a phase where not a lot happens, but there are some effects that activate during the standby phase, and so those effects would apply here. Next up is main phase one, and this is where you're going to take a majority of your turn. Main phase one is where you can normal summon or special summon monsters, activate your spell cards, set your trap cards, and play a majority of your actions for that turn. Once you've made all your moves for the turn, you're then free to move to the battle phase. In the battle phase, you're free to attack with as many monsters as you have that are face up in attack position. Keep in mind that each monster only gets one attack per turn unless it has an effect that says otherwise, and you must attack monsters that your opponent has on their field. But if your opponent has no monsters on their field, you are then able to declare a direct attack. In this case, your opponent would take damage equal to the attacking monster's attack, and this is typically the quickest way to get your opponent's life points to zero. After you've finished attacking, you can then move to main phase two. In main phase two, you're allowed to perform the same actions as main phase one, but you're not allowed to normal summon again. If you normal summoned in main phase one, then you cannot normal summon in main phase two. However, if you did not normal summon in main phase one, you then can normal summon in main phase two. You're also still able to special summon, activate spell cards, and set trap cards. Then once you're finished, you move to the end phase, where if there are any effects that need to activate, you will activate them. But most of the time, it typically just passes play to the opponent, who will then take their draw phase and go down the list of phases themselves. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2020. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and if you really found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.